Yes, but I would still appreciate your blessing. So if you are able, I invite you to extend your hands for us. Lord God, bless. We thank you for the variety of gifts you have bestowed upon us. Cross that each of us may use our differing gifts as members of one body. With faithfulness, and may we be doers of your word and not hearers only. John and his family as they grieve his loss from pancreatic cancer. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers for a, a new granddaughter yet to be born, but in the next week, and we're safe to her grief for our daughter and her husband and her baby. Prayers for a new granddaughter yet to be born next week. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
prayers for Jennifer's brother who is healing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Sandy, who suffers from dementia. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Coleman, little baby Coleman, and his parents, Tristan and Sheena. God, in your mercy. For prayers for my brother who's starting treatment for multiple myeloma. For a brother starting treatment for multiple myeloma. God, in your mercy. For those caring for parents with dementia. God, in your mercy. Amen. I invite you now to close your eyes. Feel your feet on the earth. Feel the air on your skin. Take a breath. And join me in prayer. God of love and light, we thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you for the beginning of this new relationship. And we thank you for all of the blessings that surround us, even when we don't see them. We pray this day for all of those we love, for those who seek your healing, and for the healers themselves. Give them strength for the journey ahead and wisdom to know what to do when the road turns. God, we pray all of these things, those that we say aloud and those that we pray in our hearts with sighs too deep for words. In the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 24 and 28 to 30. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom from the, for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they asked? Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself, and you will tell me, Do hear in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. Truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand. 
good as you are able and join us in the singing of the hymn 606, Come, Let Us Use the Grace Divine. Will you pray with me? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts this morning be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I'm your pastor now. I don't know about you, but I did not see that one coming. Surprise. Surprise. For, uh, some of you may know that while I was in seminary at Seattle University, this was my home church from 2006 to 2011. So at this place, I've preached a whole bunch. I've taught confirmation classes. I've led women's retreats. Two of my children, two of my three children were baptized in this place. I've sung at memorial services. I've helped preside at memorial services. I have climbed the giant tree by the church sign. <laughs> because everybody does crazy things when they're young and in their mid-30s, right? <laughs> but I've never been your pastor. So this is a new thing that we're starting together this morning. 
with the exception of I came back for a, a few months when this congregation was between pastors. Some of you are nodding. But with if the exception of those few months, I have not been here for 12 years. So let's do a little show of hands this morning. How many of you were not here at this church 12 years ago? You raise your hands high. It's okay. We're not judging you. <laughs> we're glad you're here. How many of you, thinking about the people you love, know somebody who was born in the last 12 years? Or how many of you in this room were born in the last 12 years? <laughs> how many of you have someone you love who's died in the past 12 years? How many of you have moved to a new house or a new living re- arrangement in the past 12 years? How, how many of you have a new job or who have retired from a job in the past 12 years? So this is the strange thing about this relationship. I know you a little bit, and I don't know you at all. That's a lot of change in the past 12 years. I don't, I know you and I don't know you. I have affection for you. But most importantly, what I have for you, based on what I do know, is trust. I want you to hear me say that. I trust this congregation already. And that's a pretty good place to start. It's okay if you have no affection for me. (laughs) And it's okay if you have no trust of me. Particularly if you just met me five minutes ago. I wouldn't expect you to. But I want you to hear that as your pastor, I trust you. Because I think that's important. The scripture you just heard read this morning is a scripture where Jesus comes back to his hometown after a long time away. And a lot has happened to Jesus while he's been away, right? He's been baptized. He's heard the voice of God say, You are my beloved in whom I am pleased. He's been in the desert. He's wrestled with temptation. And he comes back to his hometown and starts off with some trust. He unrolls the scroll of the prophet Isaiah He reads these beautiful words and says, Today the scripture has been fulfilled. And at first things go great. The people who are listening to him say, Those words are so gracious. We're amazed. It's amazing. Uh, And then they say some other things, which we'll look at in a second. And by the end of this scripture, the people in Jesus' hometown are ready to literally throw him off a cliff. (laughs) because things have gone so wrong. So there are two reasons I picked this scripture for us this morning. (laughs) The first is, if we ever get to the point where you're ready to throw me off a cliff, I'm going to ask myself, what would Jesus do? And the answer is, hightail it out of town and go somewhere else. (laughs) So I thought it would be good to get some clarity on that (laughs) from the beginning. We're not going to throw him off the ark either. Thank you, Sarah. I did not pick this scripture because I think I am Jesus and you are not. If anything, I think the whole point of what we're doing together is to learn to live and love more completely the way Jesus himself loved. Otherwise, what the heck are we doing here this morning? So I want to look at this scripture in three ways. I want to look at what Jesus says, which I think is important. What happens in the interaction with the community and where things go so terribly wrong. So first, what does Jesus say? The first thing he says to his community is from the prophet Isaiah. This is Jesus saying, this is the work that I am about. This is the reason we are here. He unrolls the skull and says this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to restore sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are captive, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he says, Today, today, this scripture has been fulfilled as you sit and listen. This is not a bad starting place, right? 
God is all about the work of healing, the work of liberation, the work of proclaiming good news to people who thought they would never hear any good news. This is what Jesus is about. This is what I think the church at our best is about. And at first, the people hearing this good news, this familiar news from the Jesus' own Jewish tradition, are excited. And they say, oh, he sounds so great. We're so astounded at how well-spoken he is. And then they say this one thing that ticks Jesus off. <laughs> they say, isn't that Joseph's kid? <laughs> Isn't that Joseph's kid up there? I don't know about you, but I have been in settings, this is not one of them, uh, where I have returned to a place after five years, 10 years, 20, 40 years, and a lot has happened to me, and I've changed, and I have new ideas and a new way of being in the world and in relationship with God, and for whatever reason, the people I'm with, maybe this has happened to you, the people that you're with can't see it. They can't see how you've changed. They can't see how you are now. All they can see is that <laughs> one snapshot of the way you used to be. And friends, that is not a good beginning for this relationship between Jesus and his town. His response is actually to get pretty mad. Jesus does get mad, in case you didn't know. <laughs> and he says the prophet's never welcome in his hometown and he gives this long list of instances where God wasn't paying attention to the hometown crowd God was paying attention to the outsider instead and that is what ticks his people off and makes them drive him to the edge of town and try and throw him off a cliff it happens really fast <laughs> there's just ten verses in so what could have been different why does Jesus get so angry, and why does it escalate to the point of attempted murder in the scripture? I think it has to do with trust. For many of us, we trust ourselves with the role of helping other people. We're very good at what we do, we like to help, and it feels good and familiar to be entrusted, to be the one who sets someone free, who helps someone see something they couldn't see before, who tells someone good news when they've only heard bad things. That feels good. And for some of us, it feels familiar. I think that that wasn't the hard part for Jesus' hometown crowd to hear. When Jesus reads this long list of what the Spirit of God has anointed him to do, bring good news to the poor, set people free, help them recover their sight. I don't think the people freak out because that work sounds too hard. I think they get upset at the idea that maybe they're blind too. Maybe they're being held captive too. Maybe there's something that they also need to be liberated from. In the work of ministry. The church at its best is not one person setting everyone free and healing everyone and another person saying, oh, thank you, great healer, for giving me that thing. <laughs> the relationship between pastor and congregation at its best is not like that either. There will be times in our time together when there will be something that I can't see, something that I'm blind to, and you will need to tell me Pastor, you need to look at that a different way. There will be times when I am so bound up in my own expectations and my own past and my own way of being that I will need you to help set me free, to love more fully. There will be times when I need you, and I suspect there will be times when you need me. If we're all to be set free with the liberating love of God, we need each other. We take turns. And to do that, we need to trust each other. <coughs> so friends, at the beginning of our relationship together, I pray that we will pay attention to when we are giving and when we are receiving. 
I pray that we will take turns, that we will lead and follow together as we seek to embody Jesus' love in the world more fully. And I pray that over the next coming weeks and months, that together, in our relationship with God and our relationship with each other and our relationship as pastor and congregation, that we will all be able to say, I trust you, because that is a very good place to start. Amen? Amen. <clears throat>
invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. We ask for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So the service of word and table, dear colleagues, is in the hymnal. This is page 12 in the hymnal. You can follow along the service there. Page 12 in the hymnal is what we're looking at. Thank you, Steve. If you want to follow along, you can. If you don't have a hymnal, you can look on with a friend. Page 12. And I'm going to start with the words that say, Hear the good news. Are you ready? <laughs> Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us let us offer one another signs of reconciliation and love. We're kind of tacked in here, so can you give someone a peace sign or a wave to exchange or a bow to exchange peace? <laughs> the Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You hovered over the waters as you called us into being. You led us through the wilderness as you made a way where there was no way. In you we live and move and have our being. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn, saying together, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, the and the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. He ate and drank with all kinds of people. He spoke of a time when we would all be liberated from that which holds us captive. He suffered like we do. He died like we will. And he rose again to give us all hope. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, and as often as you eat, remember me. When the supper, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, and after giving thanks to you, God, he gave it to his disciples as well, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it and remember me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim, saying together, the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. May they be for us the body and love of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his love. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so, 
with the confidence of the children of God. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught, saying together. Marilyn are going to be communion servers this morning. I would like them to come forward. And this is tricky, you guys, but I think what we're going to try and do is if you can come forward kind of as you're led in the middle, and if you're able, walk back to your seat on the grass. If you're not able, walk back. We're going to trust that the Holy Spirit will know what to do here. If you can't come forward for communion and you still want to receive, if you just raise your hand um, at the end of our time together, Rick and Marilyn will make sure you serve. <coughs> the only reason I'm not serving you is because I can't be that close to you. So I'm going to sing and hold you in my heart.
Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery, this foretaste of your banquet to come, where all the saints are gathered together around a table that is abundant and big enough for all of us. May this taste give us strength for the work to come as we seek to build a world of love and reconciliation. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. So, we have some announcements. And I think I know them, but if I'm wrong, you're going to tell me, right? Uh, the first announcement is that I am masking, but I am still available this week uh, with safety precautions in mind. Uh, my day off this week is Monday, but if you need me Tuesday through Friday, uh, my information is in the electronic newsletter that you receive, my email address and my phone, and I would love to get to know you better. I'll be over here, but for coffee hour, especially if you're not wearing a name tag, please come by and tell me what your name is. I'm not going to shake your hand, not because I'm rude, but because I don't want you to get the plate, but I will wave to you and bow to you. Um, so there's coffee after church. Please feel free to stay and eat and drink and celebrate our life together. Tuesday morning Zoom prayer group will meet as usual at 10 a.m. Wednesday community dinners are back. So from five, praise God, from 5:30 to 6:30 in the celebration space. Anyone from the community, whether you have food at home or you don't, whether you live in a house, whether you live in a car, anyone from the community is welcome to come and continue to extend the table. That's 5:30 to 6:30 on Wednesday. Any announcements I don't know about? Another miracle. <laughs> In that case, receive these words of blessing. Go forth into the world to love and serve your neighbor, especially those to whom love is still a stranger. And as you go, may the grace of Jesus and the love of God and the companionship of the Holy Spirit go with you this day and every day, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. <laughs>